All right, the couple of things, they can figure out a couple of important things. First of all, they can figure out the temperature of that part of the world at that time. That's amazing to me. But basically what they can do is that there's two kinds of oxygen, and these are what we call isotopes of each other. And um, there's oxygen 18 and oxygen 16. And they take the ratio. That means they take the oxygen 18. That's how you symbolize it. You divide it by the amount of oxygen um, 16, because you get these little bubbles. I don't know if you can kind of see over here, but there's tiny little bubbles. And uh, we'll see a video clip that explains this a little bit better. And then they figure out this ratio. And from this ratio, they can figure out the temperature. Pretty amazing. Uh, the other thing you can figure out is actually what's in the atmosphere. So if you've got, you know, this ice core and there's these trapped gases, you'll see this in the video clip. These trapped gases, if you then take these gases and you analyze them, you can figure out how much carbon dioxide was present. And then you know how old it is, you know, so for, you know, from this sliver right here, you know, take this much and let's say this is, you know, 200,000 years ago. Um, they can analyze these two bubbles, or probably thousands of bubbles, and they can figure out, well, how many of them contain carbon dioxide and how much is oxygen and how much is nitrogen. They can figure out how much of everything is in there. So it's pretty, uh, pretty cool, I think. So um, let's uh, look at these professors. I think it's Professor. Professor! And he's going to explain us how the ice cores work. Okay? Inside of this ice core is trapped the environment from about 50,000 years ago. One of the things you can easily see in this ice core are small bubbles. That's the atmosphere trapped at the time that this particular ice was formed. Scientists have only been deciphering the pages of these frozen books for about 40 years. Geoscientist Jim White unlocks their secrets at the Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research in Boulder, Colorado. We can crush it up. We can remove the air that's inside of here and find out how much CO2 is in the atmosphere, how much methane or other greenhouse gases were in the atmosphere uh, at that time that this ice core was formed. So this ice core is a, a wonderful book, if you will, a, a, a recorder of the past environment. He says this old ice can bring new understanding about global warming. So it's not just that the past tells us uh, what happened, but the past gives us some clues about what could occur in the future. One of the neat things about ice cores is that in areas where you have lots of snow accumulating every year, you have very detailed time records. Uh, Greenland is a place that has lots of accumulation, so we can look at year-by-year -year changes 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 years ago. White studied ice cores from Greenland that revealed huge temperature spikes at the end of the last two ice ages, 15,000 and again 12,000 years ago. At the time, there was a 22 degree Fahrenheit temperature spike in just 50 years in the northern hemisphere. When you're talking about major changes to the Earth's temperature, 50 years is practically the blink of an eye. The triggers for those ancient, dramatic climate changes, atmospheric circulation, like the jet stream, ocean circulation like the Gulf Stream, and fluctuations in levels of sea ice. Where are those trigger points in the modern climate system? Is it sea ice, which is disappearing rapidly? Is it ocean circulation? Is it atmospheric circulation? Or is it some combination of those three? I would say we're still flying blind when it comes to uh, whether or not a rapid change is on its way. More and more data from ice cores is expected to improve computer models for predicting future climate change. That's vital, said White, so the planet can be prepared to adapt. Greenland contains something in the neighborhood of uh, 20 feet of sea level rise, where the, where the entire Greenland ice sheet to melt, that would inundate, drown major cities like Miami and Houston and, and New Orleans, Oakland. It would be you know, all around the world. So that's, it, it's important to recognize how much ice is up there. There's a certain rugged and spirited nature to the scientists who work in temperatures around minus 20 Fahrenheit. This time-lapse video is from the drilling shelter at the West Antarctic Ice Sheet Project. After the cores are drilled and retrieved, they are painstakingly prepared for study at more than two dozen universities, with an occasional break for some calisthenics in the cold. Ice cores from the Antarctic and Greenland are flown to the National Ice Core Lab, a National Science Foundation facility near Denver. Many then make it to White's lab at the University of Colorado. We measure about 10,000 samples a year, so we have to take some fairly detailed records in this ice core. 
there's a thermometer that lurks within the ice. This one is based on the ratio of heavy hydrogen to light hydrogen. The more heavy hydrogen you have, the warmer the cloud was that made the snow. Like all those crime scene investigators on TV, these experts determine the what, where, and when, but with evidence from eons ago. This is a, a system that will uh, analyze carbon monoxide concentration and isotopes and ice cores. Well, this instrument here is measuring the um, hydrogen isotopes of methane. And what that tells us about is the where the methane comes from. Is this uh, coming from the tropics? Is it coming from polar regions? The evolution of the ice core uh, analysis uh, has really been remarkable over the last 40 years or so. Uh, as we say, every time we measure an ice core, we find new information. Information that could make a difference in our planet's future. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt. Well, hopefully they, of course, explained it better than your teacher here, because that's kind of what they do, is that they are there. Hey, this is the one I just was the most fascinated with. As I